All right, well, I'd like to welcome everybody here in Zoom land into our uh, Tacoma Arts Live project. This is Ron Damaris. I'm with the Cohen Veterans Network and Cohen Clinic, Cohen's Military Family Network here in Lakewood, Washington. Um, I give you a little bit of information about what we do at the clinic. We provide high top quality mental health care to post 9-11 veterans, their family members and caregivers, as well as National Guard reservists, and also active duty members with an active uh, referral from TRICARE. With that being said, we are celebrating our three year anniversary at the clinic and have partnered up with the Tacoma Art Lives people that you see before you to include Katie, Eli and Jill. And they're going to be hosting uh, an art project, project for all of you to uh, partake in today. And if you have questions along the way, feel free to ask. I would like to include that we are recording this session so that it can be seen by others who were not in attendance today um, but for that, I'd like to introduce Jill, Katie, and Eli with the Tacoma Arts Live project, and they are going to take it from here. Thank you, Ron, for that warm introduction. And hello, everyone. We are excited to be here today. Um, I am not sure, Jill, do you have any slides you wanted to share in advance, or would you like me to jump right into our um, first warm up after I give a little context? Um, I think we can just jump in and we can save the slides for later. Okay, cool. So um, Tacoma Arts Live is a, a nonprofit uh, organization focused on the performing arts and convening community through the arts. Our mission is actually energizing community through live performance. And so we're located in downtown Tacoma, but um, our education programs are vast and span all of Pierce County and actually a little bit up into King County at times. So um, the program that our education team is bringing forward today is called LENS Project. And LENS is an acronym, of course, because it's education and because it's military, like acronyms everywhere, right? So LENS is an acronym for learning empathy, negotiation, and sense of self. Um, and so it's also a nice little play on words, thinking about the lens through which we see the world and trying to see the world through different lenses and new perspectives, um, which is a strong way to learn about ourselves and to learn about others and how we relate to one another. So that is what we are bringing forward today. And we're going to start with, um, I called it a warm up, but I've been trying to edit my language to be a warm in. So it's getting us into the work that we're going to do together. So this warm in is called the brain dance. Um, and Jill and Eli and maybe even Hope might play along with us. Um, to, they're going to follow along and we invite you um, as you are watching to follow along with the brain dance as well. Um, now, if you're saying, saying dance, whoa, I'm not a dancer. Don't stop the recording yet. Okay, the brain dance is really cool because it is actually made for each individual to move their body at the level of comfort that they feel. And so it's really actually about just sort of waking up our bodies. And um, because it is based on the stages of movement that we go through from when we're a tiny, tiny um, baby to, to walking. And so it's actually based in the science of human development and moving through this progression with our bodies actually triggers neurological connections in our mind. Um, and so that's why we start with our brain dance. Um, so I will guide us through it. It can be done standing. I'm going to do it sitting. Um, if anybody wants to stand, feel free to stand or you can always do, um, like I said, a seated version. So I'm going to... Let's see, I'm gonna start by screen sharing my slide and see if I can get y'all some music too. We shall see. So the brain dance, um, I'm gonna, just put the slide up for now and then I'll take it down when we actually start our movement together. But I just wanna give you a sneak peek. So the first thing we do in the brain dance is we breathe. That's the first thing we do as living organisms is we breathe. And then the next thing we do is called tactile. And it's gonna be about just sort of like waking up our skin. You will see me like 
do a sinus massage because I have allergies and that needs to wake up. Then we have number three is core distal. So that's moving from the center of your body, the core out to the edge. It's stretching. All you're doing is stretching like you do when you wake up in the morning. And we'll explore different directions that we can stretch in. Number four is the spine. And that's, that's wiggling the spine. That's the connection between our head and our tail. And so we'll, you'll get to explore how you move your spine. Then number five is the upper and lower body. So we'll freeze the lower body, move the upper body. Then we'll freeze the upper body, move the lower body. And because I'm doing a seated version, but I want you to see my lower body moving, you'll see my legs go in the air. You don't have to put your legs in the air. You can just move your legs below your chair if you're sitting down. Um, and then we'll flip it. And then we do body sides. So we think about a vertical line of symmetry and moving just the right side of our body, moving just the left side of our body. Cross lateral is my favorite. I call it the sweat into the oldies. If anybody had that Richard Simmons workout tape and you did the, uh, this one, the knee raise across from the, from the old aerobics videos, that's cross lateral. So you're just um, crossing the midline of the body. But when we think about human development, what that is, is the oppositional motion of our arms and legs when we're crawling and walking. Um, and so that's how that taps into it. And then the last thing we do is the vestibular system, which kind of gets ourselves off balance. If you're standing, you could spin in a circle. If you're sitting, you could just tip over. You could curve forward. You could even, I've seen people go like this, just something to kind of get you a little off balance to kind of check in on your equilibrium. Again, you do it at the pace and the range of motion that is comfortable for you. So don't go getting all dizzy and falling over. Control your, control your choices. Um, and then we'll finish with a breath. And that's the brain dance. So let us add some music to our brain dance. And, um, and I'll just talk us through it. Super easy to follow along. And Jill, can I get a thumbs up if you can hear the music? Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me over the music? Okay, fantastic. So here we go. We will start our brain dance with breath. So just where you are, breathe. Take a few breaths. Fill your lungs with air so they get really big and make your rib cage expand. And push that air out. Let the muscles around your boots relax. All right, now we're going to wake up our sense of touch. Start at the top. Maybe you're tapping. Maybe you're patting. Maybe you're rubbing. Maybe you're like a scalp massage. What do you need to do? Here comes my sinus work. Do you hold tension in your jaw? You can do a little jaw massage neck massage, you could squeeze, go down your arms, palms of your hands, I saw some, uh, some chest pads, I love that, do your back, uh, <laughs> maybe you need a little lower back massage, and work your way down, make sure you get mud leg, oh, oh squeezing my calves is the best, okay. If you can get to the bottom of your foot, you want to do a little foot massage. <laughs> all right, brush that off, brush that off. Core distal. Bring all your energy of your body into your core towards your lower back and stretch it out. Good, bring it back in. Stretch out in a different direction. Oh, I love our small directions everyone's doing already. In and out. Now think about your spine. We're gonna work that head-tail connection. So I'm gonna curve my spine. Maybe go side to side. Oh yes, I see everyone's doing it in their own special way. Thank you all for your participation. Ooh. And now we're gonna do our upper and lower body. So glue your lower body into place and move just your upper body. Think about all the ways your upper body can move. Is it fast? Is it sharp? Is it smooth? Is it slow? Is it shaky? Is it up high? Do, can your upper body move down low? Very nice. 
And let's glue our upper body. I like to hug myself to glue my upper body. And move your lower body. So you might stomp your feet on the floor. You might wiggle your toe on the I'm gonna kick my legs in the air. Think about how your knees bend and your hips bend and your ankles pull. Excellent. And now we're gonna glue one side of your body. It doesn't matter which side. You choose right or left. And move just the opposite side of your body. Can you move it in forward space? now that you've done the brain dance? What feels different in yourself? I would say that like my body is definitely more alert than it was. I got myself situated at a standing desk today and I was kind of like, Ooh, okay, we'll see how this goes. And I'm like, all right, I can, I can move a little bit more. I'm feeling a little more agile at the moment. Absolutely. I see Hope mentioned in the chat that they feel more relaxed and more, it just went away from me. What did it say? And less, less tense. Absolutely. Eli, how are you feeling? I feel more awake and I feel definitely more like in my body and ready to go, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Ron, how are you feeling? I mean, I think I cracked in places I haven't cracked before. So I feel amazing actually. <laughs> good. Good. Um, I notice everyone seems to be smiling more now. I want like I want to you know watch the recording and rewind and see our faces at the beginning and double check, but I see a lot more smiles now. <sighs> so that's the brain dance. You can do that to any kind of music, um, and uh, like I said, it's just a series of movements, and you can do them as big or as small as you like. Um, and it's a really great way to get centered, to get connected to our bodies, to um, engage our nervous system. Um, in a way that prepares us to move forward and do productive and healthy things. So Jill, I pass to awesome. you. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, so as Katie mentioned with Lens Project, we are focused on learning empathy, negotiation, and sense of self. And we have programming that we take into the schools directly to students. We have programming that we work directly with military families, militaries and veterans. And we also have family programming. And so this next activity is one of those family activities. So hopefully if maybe you have some family around you now, or as you're watching your recording, you can gather them together. Um, to work on this project together. So this piece is going to be a visual art activity. And so we invite you to use whatever materials and supplies you have around you, whether that is just some paper and a pen, whether you have a lot of crafts with your families that you have maybe construction paper or cardstock or coloring supplies. Um, and this one, if you are able to, is going to involve some collage as well. So you can finally maybe use up some of those old magazines that have been sitting around or random fabric pieces that you have or 
Sometimes you, maybe you'll find stuff outside, grab some leaves, grab some flowers, incorporate those as well, some different um, pictures even. And so what I would like us to do first is if you just even at the moment have a piece of paper and some sort of coloring writing utensil. And something that I've found is really helpful in visual art because I'll admit visual art is not my, not my strong suit. I consider myself a theater artist, a dancer, but anyone can be a visual artist and anyone can create that way as well. And so we're gonna do a little comfort exercise, just like we talked about kind of those warm-ins or warm-ups, athletes need to stretch. We're gonna get kind of our creative brains warmed up. And so I'm just gonna have you take your piece of paper, maybe even a scratch piece of paper. I know I have some around here on my desk that I just kind of want to use up and whatever your marker, crayon, pencil is. And we are going to just do a very brief scribble warm up. And with scribbling, you are not intentionally drawing anything. You are just allowing yourself to continue moving, trying not to lift your writing or coloring material from the paper, just continually keeping it moving. And we are gonna just do this for 30 seconds. So hopefully you have something to work with now, whatever it is, again, pencil and paper works, a random notebook, scratch paper. And for just 30 seconds, I want you to challenge yourself to just keep your marker, keep your crayon, keep your pencil moving as you let your brain creatively warm up. All right. And in a moment here, I'm gonna get our clock started and 30 seconds to just scribble now, begin. Just allowing yourself to move. We're halfway through that 30 seconds. Try not to lift up your hand yet. And in three, two, one, stop. And maybe breathe out. Sometimes we find ourselves holding our breaths as we do timed activities. So go ahead and relax a moment. And I'll turn to Katie and Eli for a moment, or if anyone else would like to chime in in the chat as well. How did it feel? to just let yourself scribble, to just let your hand move, to just let your crayon go for a moment. How did that feel? I'm, I'm with you, a visual art is not my strong suit. And so I think it's really important to just like, sort of not try to draw a shape. I think that was hard. I think that was harder to just like be like, okay, I can't, I can't draw. I can't even have a goal. Okay, like that's harder, but I feel like, I mean, it's nothing and I kind of enjoy it. So yeah, yeah. If you're if you're comfortable sharing your scribble and you wanna you wanna share it. I don't know that I don't know that there can be horrible scribblers. I think is I think if you've if you kept your crayon moving, there is no horrible scribble. I'm curious of like, were there people that were like found themselves moving really fast, moving really slow? What were what was your scribble technique? I was alternating. Um I, well, so dance is my primary art form. <laughs> so I was like moving my whole body and I found myself sort of like riding a roller coaster with my crayon a little bit, which felt really fun. Um, and I also wanted to draw shapes, but uh, visual art is um, a secondary art form for me. And so I wanted to draw sh shapes um, and it was a really good challenge to to not do that. And I found what was helpful for me was to not look at my paper. Mm -hmm. That's a great technique, not looking at the paper. Sometimes people will use their like non-dominant hand as part of their warm up too. I see Hope, you were using some shading. Ron, you kind of had that smooth technique going through. So I think this can be a good, sometimes just a good kind of clear your head type activity, even if you're not going into visual art. Um, and I encourage families, as you do your scribbling, try then a round later where you maybe share a paper and you're all scribbling on the same page together and practicing how you're going to share that space. 
Um, or feel free if you're watching recording to pause and try that now and, and time it for yourself. Um, but I want to get into our activity a little bit, which we call our family shields. And so the reason we focused on family shields is because we, we found in talking with a lot of students and families that shields often can represent like protection and like strength. And so with this family shields activity, we encourage you all to think about your family strengths. And when we talk about strengths, we're not just talking about the like literal muscle strengths, but what are the things that make your family unit feel good and feel strong and kind of strengthen you together? And so I'm gonna keep us moving a little bit for today, but again, if you're able to pause the recording and take a little time to brainstorm together, we're gonna to do kind of just a quick brainstorm of, in a group of like, what are some of those things that really bring strength and that feeling of good and connection to your family. I know an example for me is I've found with my family, when we get kind of, when we get to travel and when we get to travel places together, that's a feeling of, that's an activity that really makes us feel good and makes us feel connected is being able to travel, whether it's going to a cabin or whether it's flying to a new state or country, but getting to travel um, has been one of those family strengths for me. Katie or Eli? Oh, I see someone put cooking together. Uh, random moments of love and having cuddles as bringing that strength together. Feel free as you're able to put in the chat or if you're comfortable in meeting, having playtime. I think one of the family and I don't get a ton of like time together. And so the time that we get, do get to spend together, I find myself like capturing those moments and taking a lot of photos and like, keeping those so awesome my family is uh in all in other states that are not even adjacent <laughs> to washington state and so um one of the things that makes our family strong i think is um checking in with one another and like even if we can't do like a long phone call text is so helpful just like sometimes my mom will just text me and be like I know you're really busy, but can you just text me that you're okay? <laughs> um, and yeah, so communication and um, staying in touch that way. Absolutely, yeah, that's one that I connect with a lot too, being distant from my family if we can't travel together, but um, staying connected in different virtual and non-virtual ways now. I see other people, other activities like doing yard work together, um, being able to make your home beautiful, random acts of kindness and words of affirmation. So, so these strengths can be activities or they can be certain personal qualities that, you're, that your family might share together, aspects of your family identity as well. Um, these are awesome examples. And so now what we do with these family strengths is I encourage you to start to create your family shield. And there are lots of different ways that you can create your family shield. If you have like some cardstock or some random cardboard, um, I'm thinking like leftover cereal boxes. I know I have like an old cardboard thing here in my office. I encourage you to, as a family, design what you want your family shield shape to be. You could even go the like Google route if you wanna look for some inspiration that way but think about designing your shield and cutting it out. It could also be if you have limited supplies, you could even just draw a shield shape on a piece of paper or a piece of cardstock so you have a little more texture. Katie, I see you have a good example of how to get started. I folded my paper in half and I drew like a swooping line for the top of the shield and then down to the bottom where the fold is and I'm going to cut that out and I think that will give me a shield shape I'm pretty sure awesome. and I think there's lots of different shield shapes so there's not one that you have to create but that can be part of your family negotiating is what what shield shape makes sense for your family I saw another brainstorm in the chat of spending time outdoors that can be a very rejuvenating experience for families help you connect that way as well too so go ahead 
and start to create your shield shape. Looks like Katie got her started with her material there. And then what you'll do is whatever materials you have around, whether it's the markers and crayons, whether it's the magazines, whether it's the different pieces of fabric, maybe even family pictures, if you're, if you're comfortable adding some of those, playing with your construction paper, you're going to now decorate and collage your family shield to reflect those strengths. And so you can use colors and shapes just to reflect certain feelings or certain activities, or maybe you even find a picture of doing yard work and you wanna add that picture in, or you can, you can layer in words, you can layer in colors. I have this magazine and there are airplanes on it, which is how I have to travel in order to be with my family. So I'm gonna cut out the airplanes. So I'm gonna encourage everyone to take some time now. Again, if you're watching a recording and you can pause, if you're with us live, go ahead and kind of get started if you'd like to and know that you don't have to finish this, but you can add to it later. And I'm gonna give us just a couple minutes to create our family shields. And I am going to screen share a little just slideshow with some other info and fun things coming up with Tacoma Arts Live in case you want to peek at that. Jill, did you want me to put some music on during this? If you'd like to add some music to the mix, that, that work, that sounds sure good. Sure thing. I'm thinking maybe uh, I have a song here that is... It looks like I might not be able to screen share if you're doing music. Um... Well, then we can we can skip the music and do the slides. You all can play your own music at home. Yeah, feel free. Add, add music to your space. And so with collage, you know, you could use scissors to cut things out, but you can also tear, mm -hmm. especially when you're looking at paper. I mean, I just tip my camera down. So I started cutting the airplanes, but I'm going to tear them the rest of the way and just see how that looks and see if that gives me an effect that I like. Ooh, interesting. I'm going to go this way with it. Um, and then the other thing is you could use a glue stick. You could use like the Elmer's type glue, the white glue. You could use tape. Um, and in fact, one of the craft supplies that is sometimes kind of popular is called washi tape. And that's like decorative tape with different you know, patterns and designs on it. I happen to have some in my craft box next to me. Um, Cause I think I'm not going to use glue today. I think I'm just gonna use um, tape. I have even had teaching artists make their own glue. If you don't have glue on hand and I need to double check that recipe when I'm not screen sharing but I can, I'll share that before we leave as well. I feel like it was flour and water. I mean, it was That's like- That's what I was thinking. It was pretty, it was, it was items you will likely have easily accessible. My magazine is loaded with food pictures. This is perfect. Oh, I'd love to offer that another fun collage um, item is uh, greeting cards. If you are like me and when someone gives you a card, you feel like you have to save it forever and you don't wanna throw it away. Um, I like to repurpose my cards by giving them a new life as collage materials um, so that is a fun thing. You can get a lot of different colors, textures. You might even like this was from my mom and it says mom at the bottom of it. So I could even maybe put my mom's signature on my family shield if I want. That's a great one. I know other people have thought of using like wrapping paper or like tissue paper as well. Cause you can kind of crinkle those and and add some texture to your collage that way as well.
That's one of the reasons I like to use the tearing method um, with my paper because it gives a feeling of texture as well. I changed my mind, I'm gonna use a little glue. <laughs> I hope I have permission to change my mind. I think so. You know, I just thought of a kind of serious um, answer to what makes my family strong. Just thinking about this. And um, I think it's our ability to, um, I, as I was drawing hearts, I thought about this. It's our ability to have tough conversations with each other and to be really honest um, with each other. And that uh, I think maybe goes to like, highs and lows of when we're able to really use that strength. But when we're really being strong as a family, we, um, we are really honest with each other. That's a really great example. Thank you, Katie. Now I'm sure that there's still lots of decoration to be done. So if you are watching this recorded, please feel free to pause and take as much time as you need. If you are with us live, if you wanna just kind of pause where you're at for the moment, because we do have just a couple other things we'd love to introduce to you today. And if there is anyone with cameras on that would like to just briefly share where your collage is at and where one aspect of your shield, if, if you are comfortable with that. I know I'm very much in the works, but ah, I love it. Oh, yeah. See, you can use whatever you have around. And I like that. I hope it looks like you really incorporated the use of symbols and symbolism in. Yeah, so um, I started with hearts because I feel like love is really a strong part of our family unit. And so the larger heart represent my husband and I and the little heart um, is my one and a half year old son. And then I just started to do like some lines that intertwine because I feel like we are like an intertwined family. We hold hands a lot, we cuddle a lot. So that kind of just represents um, our film. And all I had was a pencil and a post-it. <laughs> so. I love it. Thank you for joining in and, and making use of whatever you had around you there. Wonderful. I saw Ron was holding something up. 
I kind of did something similar because I had some papers. So I did my version of my drawing of my, I can't see, can you see it? Yes. Yep, now I can. So it has my initials of all my animals up top and then my wife and I's initial and then the big our D for our last name. So we just kind of, you know, incorporate. And then I did kind of, it's kind of funny that Hope uh, says something about putting the lines of, you know, the interconnect her family together. It's kind of what I was thinking when I was doing that inside of my D was like the, everybody's all intertwined within the family. And so the shield is, is something that signifies strength and signifies, you know, your protection of your, your regime or your realm. So um, that's kind of how I felt about that. Wonderful. Thank you. Eli, I saw something starting to peek up on your screen as well. Um, I found some Polaroids that we took at a cabin trip um, last summer. And I put, because like, I, I don't like, and I put some hearts because it's, it's all like love. And um, like, that's what brings us together. The people that, that are my family. And, um, but like, I, I was like thinking about symbols and stuff, but I just, I can't think of anything else except like us being together and having a good time. Like there's no way for me to like put that into words. So I just, these pictures that I took that I, I love a lot. Wonderful. Yeah, you can go all different directions. And, and these can be kind of living shields that, that can be added to as, as you discover other things or, or maybe those that started small can start to grow into some larger shields and, and have other families kind of add things in passing. Wonderful. If I would say if you are home, Kate, I'm going to turn it to you in a second, but I would say if you are home and you've been creating shields together um, and just want to share with it, I'm going to go ahead and put our education email in the chat. If you just want to like take a picture and showcase what your family's created, we'd love to see what your family has together, done together. Katie. I just wanted to say, I heard some little sprinklings um, from each of the people who shared that made me feel like um, I want to acknowledge that our families might be our blood relatives who live in our house, but that is not the only definition of family. Um, and our, you know, our family is those who we love and those who love us. And that could be pets. That could be um, extended family that live outside your home. That could be um, what, what I really enjoy people calling your family of choice, right? Those people that that you surround yourself with that make you feel strong, right? And that give you that familial sense of protection. So I think Eli, over the summer, it was uh, families of blood, families of choice and families of chance. There are some people that just come into our lives by chance and they are a part of our family too. Yes, I love that description, thank you. I'm looking at our time here, Katie, and I wanted to see if you would like to move to your activity. So we want to do a little movement one first. There is so much we would love to do with you all. Um, the writing activity, I just feel like there's there's not going to be any way we're going to be able to squeeze it in. So um, Jill, what if we did a quick freeze and justify and then did our wrap up? I think that sounds great. Okay. So for this game, freeze and justify if, if you're comfortable participating along with your cameras on or feel free to participate as a group or family unit or with your friends later as you're watching this recording. Um, and you just need a little bit of space to move around. And so this is kind of a theater improv movement game, uh, a good combo of the arts here, much like a lot of our programs. Um, and the idea is that you just get to start kind of exploring the space, playing with different levels, playing with different shapes. And at some point I will call freeze, or if you are playing this in your own time, someone will call freeze. And then you just start calling on a couple individuals to justify why they could be in that position. And so it could be a, just as simple of like, oh, I forgot something. That was why I was in that position. You can go even further. You can start to have people play with characters or become different things, but it's just an, a quick kind of movement to get you, get you moving physically and to get your brains going of just that, what's that first thing that comes to your mind? 
So if you if you are able to participate with us and want to, sometimes you can do it with music. I'm gonna just go ahead and let us start to move and explore your space and play with levels. And you can do it seated, you can do it standing, you can do it lying around. Think about what your arms are doing, what your legs are doing. And then I'm going to have you freeze. And Katie, justify your position. I'm giving someone a bouquet of flowers. <gasps> Lovely, I would love to receive that bouquet of flowers. And Eli, if I could have you briefly unmute and justify your position. I'm running away from a bee that's <gasps> trying to get my picnic. Running away from a bee. And go ahead and everyone start moving again and moving and exploring your space and playing with levels and go ahead and freeze. And Ron, are you comfortable unmuting and justifying your position? Repositioning. I'm reaching for stars that are always out and present when there are no clouds in the sky. Awesome. Reaching for those stars that are always there. Hope, what about you? I'm imitating a Beyonce move from one of her songs. Love it. Getting into that dance move. And everyone start to move in your space and explore your levels. You can go play with your speed. Maybe you're moving slow. Maybe you want to move fast. And freeze. And Eli, justify your position. I'm playing the piano. Awesome. Rob, justify your position. I'm in a dance move. I'm not certain which one, but I'm in a dance move. Right in the middle of the dance move. And go ahead and move a little more and explore. And think about now moving maybe in slow motion. Sometimes if you are playing this game with your kiddos and maybe they're getting a little too exploratory with their movement, maybe a little too fast, you can add the, the level of like, we're, we're playing this movement underwater or we're playing this movement in space and that can help them focus in on being a little more conscious of their surroundings and freeze and hope, justify your position. I'm imagining myself as a jellyfish. Ooh, being a jellyfish. And Katie? I'm doing that sprinkler move. Awesome. <laughs> and I am about to like smack my leg. I was like getting that warmed up, getting that warmed up, right in that position and go ahead and relax. So that is again, a good physical game, a good mental game. If you're, if you're with your family, you just need to just need to get out of your seats, get off the couch for a little. It can be short rounds, it can be long rounds. You can play with music, you can play with characters. Um, so lots of fun ways you can incorporate that, that theater game. All right. I'm wondering now, I wanna kind of give a moment to Katie, if you have something out, but I also wanna give a moment if there are questions for us about Tacoma Arts Live, about Lens Project. Um, feel free to put those in the chat if there are things you're curious about that we've touched on here. Mm -hmm. um, and while we're waiting for some questions to pop up, um, I wanna touch back in on the family shield um, and say, you know, in our demonstration today, we were each working on the family shield as a solo endeavor, but we really do encourage this to be one shield that the whole family contributes to um, so that you can have that, so that reflection together and um, identify with one another where your shared strength is. Um, and sometimes you might find in your discussion that a family member says, well, this is how I make our family strong. And another family says, well, this is, member says, this is how I make our family strong. And you might want to represent our individual strengths on your shield, as well as the group strengths. Um, because uh, it probably goes without saying you're all, all nodding already. But yeah, but because that is, that is one of the things that's really key in our families is that we are individuals. We are unique special important individuals and we make something even um, something really special together as well as a family and so I encourage you to represent all of those things on your shield as you work together. And sometimes when we do those visual art activities with families too we also kind of encourage you to think about where are you where and how will you display this artwork too 
And that's something you can kind of think about as a family of, of where in your house, is it an art piece that, that rotates and cycles through each room? Does each person get it for a week or two? Or, or where, can you, where can you kind of showcase that artwork? Um, so just another, another way to think about kind of your, as you are creating it. I saw that we did get a question into the chat of, will we be connecting with Cohen Clinic in the future to do some projects together? And that is definitely our hope. Um, as we said, we have um, our the family art series, much like the Family Shields, where we have projects that can bring your whole family together. Um, we have the ability to do programming in person or in the virtual space, depending on the needs of our community partners. So, um, and we also will provide materials at events like that as well. So sometimes it's great to find what you can at home, but we can also support with that. Um, and then we also have our Lens Storyteller series, which is specific to military and veterans um, and, and getting to do some similar projects and some that we didn't get to touch on today as well. So um, definitely keep an eye out for events that we will partner with Cohen Clinic on. So be listening for Cohen Clinic and Tacoma Arts Live and we hope to have some this spring. So I have one closing activity, but then I think, um, do we turn it back over to Ron and Hope after that? All right. If there are no further questions now, I'll go into our closing, but please know that that email address that Jill put in the chat, education at TacomaArtsLive.org, um, that will reach us and um, we'll be happy to have any follow-up that you would like. If you'd like to know more about what we're doing or where else you might be able to participate with us, um, or if you're like the recording hasn't posted and you're like, I can't remember the order of the brain dance, send me that please. I'm happy to send you the brain dance. Um, so we're going to close with what is called a butterfly hug. And um, if you are familiar with it, I hope you're going, oh, I'm happy to do a butterfly hug. If you're not familiar with it, I'm very excited to share it with you. And I'm going to put up the directions on the screen. So many windows are open. Butterfly hug, all right. So this is um, a self-care um, calming technique um, that you can do anywhere. I'm gonna be on an airplane in a couple of weeks and I plan to do it when I'm on the airplane because I know I'm gonna be stressed out. Um, so the butterfly hug um, is a hug that you give yourself and um, you can either cross your hands um, like to, to your fingertips or to your shoulders, um, or you can um, link your thumbs together, you know, like a shadow puppet bird <laughs> um, and place your hands on your chest that way. This is my preferred method because I feel a little squished when I do this, like it's too much hug. Um, and I like to be able to press into the center of my chest with my palms. So you do, you do how it works for you. Um, and what we're going to do, I'll walk us through it, but we'll take some deep breaths, we'll close our eyes. And then as our hands are crossed, we're just gonna alternate tapping our fingertips against our chest. So if you're here, you're tapping, you can tap your whole hand, which is kind of nice. Um, you can tap as fast as you want, as slow as you want. You can keep a regular rhythm, but the idea is that we're tapping and we're breathing. And that's all we're doing. And I'll just guide us through that. We'll take some nice slow breaths. Um, and that's our butterfly hug. So find yourself in a comfortable position, maybe resituate your bottom on your chair. Think about the alignment of your spine. If you've been kind of hunched over working on your art project, it's time to stand up. And we'll cross our hands, place them at our chest or our shoulders. We'll close our eyes and we'll breathe in. And as we exhale, we'll tap. And we continue to breathe and continue to tap. Maybe you wanna speed your tapping up. Maybe you wanna go even slower. 
If you are peeking your eyes open, you will see that I'm swaying because when I get into this nice slow tap, it makes me want to rock. And that helps me feel calm as well. And we'll take one more breath in. If you've been swaying, find stillness. Let your fingertips find stillness as you exhale. And gently open your eyes. I'm not ready to take my hands off my chest. It feels nice. <laughs> but go ahead and release that. So that's a butterfly hug. And that is one of many calming techniques that you can use when you're starting to feel a little overwhelmed, a little stressed out, a little worked up. Thank you, Katie. I did in the chat put again our education email if you're looking to reach any of us with Tacoma Arts Live and our education department. And I also put in our TacomaArtsLive.org website if there was anything as you were peeking at that slideshow while doing your family shield. As you saw, we have some exciting youth programming coming up and also some great shows and events if you're just looking for something to do as a family and want to come on downtown for for, for a show or an event here. So um, feel free to peruse both of those and reach out if you have questions. Well, thank you, Jill, Eli, and Katie. It was a wonderful presentation today. And again, thank you for participating in our three-year anniversary at the clinic. Again, if you have any issues with mental health care and you need help and you're a veteran or a family member of a veteran, Feel free to call us. We're in Tacoma, easy to find. Uh, if you have it, looking up for information about the Cohen Veterans Network, you can you can look that up in the internet as well as CohenVeteranNetwork.org, and you can find lo locations if you're happy to transfer uh, out of the state and you need a place uh, somewhere in between. There's locations all across the country. Uh, thank you for partnering with, with us today, sharing your amazing information and, and exercises. I feel completely different than I did when I started in. Uh, um, so yes, we look forward to working with you very shortly and soon so that we can touch as many people as we possibly can and, and make differences in people's lives every single day. So thank you again. Have a wonderful day. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you all again very, very soon.